To evolve your existing data center into a private cloud, you first need to understand the pieces that make up a private cloud. So the pieces that are listed on the left here, uh, these are the pieces that typically make up a virtual infrastructure, servers, storage, networking, the data center infrastructure, things like uh, the racks, the power, the cooling, UPS, maybe a generator backup. You've also got the virtualization hypervisor, virtual machines, the operating systems inside the virtual machines, and the applications running on top of those operating systems. And then finally, you've got the people that are running the data center the IT infrastructure managers, server managers, network storage managers, all these people really make up the existing virtual infrastructure. And then to turn that into a private cloud, there's other pieces that go on top of it. Those pieces are the cloud director, for lack of a better term. Cloud director is essentially the software application that's going to really provide the cloud orchestration. It's going to provide things like self-service so that end users or power users from your different divisions can log in to your private cloud. They can access the application catalog, which is really just a catalog of virtual machines that you've created. These are sort of golden images that have your company's applications already installed and configured on them, and then they can deploy them with a few clicks of a mouse. Now, you might be saying to yourself, hey, I really don't want my end users deploying their own applications but you really need to picture uh, larger organizations when you picture your private cloud. Picture multinational enterprises with hundreds of data centers and IT administrators and divisions all around the world, and they're using this private cloud. So it's not just, let's say, the cashier who works in a retail store who's going out there and deploying their own applications. It's a much higher level person. It might be an IT division manager who's using the private cloud to deploy new web server and database infrastructure. It might be a developer who's using the private cloud to deploy their own personal test environment to test a new version of your company's custom applications. So picture larger organizations using this private cloud, and that's who's taking advantage of the self-service and application catalog. Now, the private cloud also needs resource controls to create virtual data centers. Each of these different organizations can have their own virtual data centers, and these can be carved out into different types of resource pools with different types of service level agreements. You'll also need secure networking that'll provide multi-tenancy. So in the case of a private cloud, your tenants are your different IT divisions or different pieces of your organization that are utilizing the cloud, but they need to be able to do it securely. You don't want somehow development stepping on the toes of production and causing some sort of system outage. So you've got this secure networking piece that's going to secure the private cloud to put firewalls and network security in between these different virtual data centers, even though they may all still be running on the exact same virtual infrastructure. And then finally, the last piece of this puzzle is that you need some sort of usage resource reporting, which they call chargeback or showback. So even though this is a private cloud and you may not be charging these tenants an actual dollar amount to use the infrastructure, you still need to be able to show them the amount of the infrastructure they used to help justify, you know, frankly, your job and this cloud infrastructure that you've built. So you need to be able to show, let's say, that production used 80%, development used 10%, and manufacturing used 10%. And uh, this software application, like a chargeback application, could actually put a dollar amount on that even though you may not actually bill them back. Now, in the case of a public cloud, of course, you want a dollar amount on that so that you can actually charge your customers. So to review, these are the pieces that make up the private cloud. Of course, you've got the virtual infrastructure pieces. You've got the traditional data center with your servers, networking, and storage. You've got your virtualization hypervisor on top. You've got your virtual machines, operating systems, and applications. And then layered on top of that, the private cloud is created by the cloud director that provides self-service, the application catalog, resource controls. You've got a secure networking piece that provides the secure multi-tenancy. And then finally, a reporting or chargeback piece to detail out the usage of that private cloud. So now that we know all the different pieces that make up the private cloud, we can consider the steps that we'll need to take to move from a traditional data center through virtualization into private cloud computing.
whether or not your data center has a few servers or a few hundred servers, most companies have implemented some form of virtualization at this point. However, most of those companies haven't achieved 100% virtualization. In other words, they haven't converted 100% of their physical servers to run a virtualization hypervisor, and they've still got some percentage of their servers using traditional operating systems with applications loaded on top. So while most companies are just dipping their toes into the pool of cloud computing and investigating cloud computing, like you probably are at this point, you still have time to press for 100% virtualization of all your servers first. And that's because virtualization, as you know, is the framework for cloud computing. It's the foundation for cloud infrastructure. So you need 100% virtualization, or at least a very high percentage of servers virtualized in your infrastructure to even begin taking advantage of cloud computing. There's too many companies out there that still think that virtualization of particular types of applications just isn't possible. But I want you to know that you can virtualize any application. I don't care what it is these days. It can be virtualized, whether it's a tier one high performance application or it's a strange application that requires some specific uh, like USB dongle to be in the back of the server. I don't care what it is, it can be virtualized. So I encourage you to push towards 100% virtualization in your data center because really that's going to be your foundation for cloud computing. You can take those virtual machines, you can load your cloud director that offers self-service and a catalog, put the virtual machines in the catalog, and then really leverage that virtual infrastructure and very quickly turn it into a cloud infrastructure. So again, don't just dip your toes into the pool of virtualization. Push for 100% virtualization in your data center, and then you'll be able to very quickly turn that into a cloud infrastructure.